Alrighty then, hello internet, ladies and gentlemen, and all the other configurations of being. My name is Velvet, welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to what I think, big think, will be the last episode of the first Ace Attorney game. Uh, this is the defendant lobby, alright, but there's no defendant. I've been trying to reach Lana all morning. Where could she be? And where's Emma, for that matter? It almost seems as if something's been happening behind the scenes. Hi, Edgeworth. Edgeworth, knowing you, you've already figured it out. Who the owner of the 77 ID card number is? Well, I have a pretty strong hunch. Yes, I do. Looks like I'm not the only one who's figured it out. You know, the only reason this trial didn't reach a verdict yesterday is because there was still room for doubt regarding this ID record. If that number does belong to whom you suspect, then no doubt will remain. After all, he hasn't been officially charged with anything. True, not yet. In any event, once all doubt has been removed from that list, I can call for a ruling. Five minutes right, and Chief Prosecutor Skye will be found guilty. But she didn't do it! I figured you'd say as much. That's why I came here, to hear what you have to say. This is the first time he's ever done something like this. Lana's hiding something, and the only way we'll ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. The truth? Everything goes back to the SL9 incident. Don't be stupid. Today's the last day of the trial. We don't have time to reminisce about the past. That depends on you. If she's found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find out what really happened. I'll think about it. See you in court, right? This is it. If I'm ever going to find out what Chief Gant has on her, it's now. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Normally, this is when the prosecution puts forth its opening statement. Huh? But before that, the police chief has a proposal to make. Chief Gant? Morning, folks! How's everyone doing? Hey, Uji, been back to the pool yet? N no, I've been drowning enough as it is in my work. Oh, that's a good one. Don't think I could top that. If you don't mind me asking, Chief, exactly what is this proposal of yours? Lana, that is to say the defendant, has asked me if she could speak directly to the court. She wants to do what? Having heard what she intends to say, I feel she should be granted her request. In the end, it should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. He's an oily car salesman and I hate it. What's this all about, defendant? I'd just like to make one simple request and I'll be finished. Well then, what's your request? Your Honor, I'd like you to put an immediate end to this trial. What? I confess to all charges against me. On February 21st of this year, I murdered Detective Bruce Goodman. In the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. No, Lana! <sighs> You can't. Your Honor, the defendant's claim does not change the defense's plea. In that case, Mr. Wright, 
I no longer require your services. But Lana! Your Honor, I hereby forfeit my right to an attorney. The prosecution may lack direct evidence against me, but it has sufficiently proven its case through testimony and circumstantial evidence. I would like you to render your verdict now, if you please. Hmm. Well, the defendant certainly has the right to self-representation. Her request is legally valid, although this is an unprecedented situation. Indeed, it appears there's no further need to continue this trial, even if Mr. Wright may feel otherwise. This can't be happening to me. It appears the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant. There he is. One moment, Your Honor. M Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution has not yet proven the defendant guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Any ruling at this stage would certainly be premature. Come now, Worthy! I understand this is a difficult time for you, but why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut, hmm? Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! Hmm. I don't think I care for your tone, Chief Gant. What? Creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes. Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would have me be. With this sudden confession from the defendant, it's obvious to me some kind of deal was struck behind the scenes. Some kind of deal, hmm? Not everyone operates as you do, worthy. Uh-huh. Hmm, I thought so. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to change its first witness. Oh, to whom? As its first witness, the prosecution would like to call Miss Emma Skye. I request that the court hears her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, I am exercising my right to self-representation. I don't think we need to continue. I don't care what you think, Miss Skye. The exposure of truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, no matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an even greater tragedy to avert one's eyes from it. Very well. The court shall grant the prosecution's request. All right. Basically, the only reason this trial is continuing is because the judge wants the tea. That's okay with you, right, Chief Gant? Worthy, you'll live to regret this. Mark my words. And, and now he's threatening Edgeworth. All right, you guys can have all the stabbies you want. Carry on. <laughs> Miss Emma Skye, please take the stand. Looks like Edgeworth has decided to take the horse by the reins. Oh, there she is. Okay. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Um, my name is Emma, Emma Skye. My occupation, I'm Lana's little sister, and I want to be a scientific investigator. Two years ago, you encountered the serial killer, Joe Dark, of the Joe Dark Killings. Is this correct? Yes. I'm trying my hardest to forget about that, though. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to recall those events one more time. Mr. Edgeworth, please remember this trial concerns the murder of Detective Goodman. Is an incident that was resolved two years ago really all that relevant? Yes, it most certainly is, Your Honor. Well, okay then. God damn it, Judge. He sure gave in fast. Now, please testify about what happened to you two years ago. The trip to yesteryear has finally begun. It's bound to lead to the truth behind this trial.
I was waiting in my sister's office that day. A man came running in and took me hostage. Neil Marshall rescued me. But I'll never forget what I saw in that instant. Oh my god, where is my voice going today? <sighs> the man raised up his knife and, and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. Honestly, this is flowing easier than the last voice I did for her. Am I doing okay? Yes. yes. I passed out. I don't remember much. That's understandable. However, please tell me, Mr. Edgeworth, what does this testimony have to do with Detective Goodman's murder? That will soon become apparent, Your Honor. You've got to admire him for his courage, considering he has absolutely no evidence. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. All right. Emma, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Can you tell us about that? Mr. Marshall jumped on dark. Just then, the lights went out. The lights? It was just about this time of the year... There was a terrible storm going on, and lightning struck nearby. So the electricity went out. Wait a minute. If it was pitch dark in that room, you shouldn't have been able to see anything, right? Right, but then, but just then, lightning flashed again outside. That sudden flash left an unforgettable image of the scene in my mind. I see. I told the detective about what I saw then. The detective? Yes, Detective Goodman. He was in charge of the case. Detective Bruce Goodman, the victim. Well, duh. So you spoke with Detective Goodman about this two years ago? Yes, that's what's so scary about this trial. And you told Detective Goodman about what you saw? Yes, but... At the time, the words just wouldn't come out. That's why I drew a picture. A picture? Yes, I think she mentioned that before. Well, Mr. Wright, have you heard enough? I feel like if I keep pestering her, I'm going to get bonked. But at the same time, I don't have what I need yet. This picture the witness drew. I believe it has a very important meaning. But the list I... Uh, uh, but the list of evidence I was given two years ago didn't contain a picture. Witness, would you mind if we added this statement to your testimony? Uh, y yes, Your Honor. There it is. I drew, I drew a picture of that scene once, but it seems to have been lost. You drew a picture of the scene you witnessed, right? Yes, I wanted to do everything I could to help the investigation. I can still see it now, whenever I close my eyes. That's strange. I took over the case after Prosecutor Marshall died, yet I never received any picture. Perhaps the witness is mistaken? But, but I did draw it, I swear. I'm not just imagining it. This picture that Emma drew, that reminds me. I guess I should check the evidence again. Yeah, see, it's just flat out telling me, oh look, you have this thing that they are very much curious about. Anyway, let's continue. The scene that imprinted an image on your mind. Can you please describe it to us? All right. So, this is the one I want. Mr. Edgeworth, this little girl put all her heart into drawing that picture. And yet, you would insist on denying its, denying its existence? Huh? Hey, I'm not the bad guy here. All I'm saying is that as the prosecutor for that case, I wasn't handed such a picture. That may well be. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Behold, this is the evidence list for the SL9 incident. Please turn it over, Your Honor. 
Turn it over. Turn it. Ah, what is this? Yes, what is that? Hey, that's it. That's the picture I drew. Indeed, two men do appear to be wrestling here. What's the meaning of this? What are you doing with that list? Me? Only the prosecutor in charge should have access to that list. Huh? These lists, they're, they're different from each other. What? It would appear, Mr. Edgeworth, that the evidence list you were handed two years ago was incomplete. These two lists fit together to form one. You can see the marks here where they were torn apart from each other. All right. So you see, Mr. Edgeworth, it's quite obvious what happened. Two years ago, only half the evidence in that case ever reached you. What? What? Order, order. But Miss Skye, why did you draw your picture on the back of such an important list? Because that's what Detective Goodman handed me in the questioning room, Your Honor. Wait a minute. If this list was torn in half, then that means... Your Honor? Are, are you alright, Mr. Wright? Your eyes are bulging from your head. If the evidence list was torn in half, then there might be more of the drawing on the back of Mr. Edgeworth's list. Yes, that's quite conceivable, Mr. Edgeworth. It's possible. Let's see. <laughs> Is something wrong? Do you even have to ask? Sorry, Your Honor. There is indeed something drawn on the back of my list. It's that... that thing. That's that... that thing. That thing that was dancing in the evidence room. Clearly, this act of vandalism is the work of a certain chief of detectives. I guess he was out of scrap paper. Evidence list restored and updated in the court record. Very well. Witness, will you please testify about this picture you drew two years ago? Huh? Oh, uh, yes, sir, your honor. What's wrong with Emma? She seemed to be thinking about something when she was looking at the picture. This is the picture that I drew two years ago. The flash of lightning was so bright, all I could see were shadows. After that, I must have fainted. This picture shows exactly what I saw in that instant. To think a flash of lightning could burn such an image in your mind. Thanks to that, though, she was able to show us exactly what she saw. Well, I don't see any contradictions here. This clearly shows Joe Dark about to murder prosecutor Neil Marshall. The defense may now begin its cross-examination. How am I supposed to cross-examine this? There's not a lot there. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but this picture the witness drew contains a blatant contradiction. What? But, but I still remember it, like, just like it was yesterday. Mr. Wright, perhaps it would be faster if you simply pointed out this contradiction for us. What part of this picture contradicts the autopsy report? Ten minutes of nonsense later. And that's also wrong! Oh, maybe not. Okay, well, fuck me then. The contradiction, of course, lies here. 
Take a look at the knife the man is holding. If you look closely, you can see its tip is broken. Even I don't have to look closely to see that, Mr. Wright. But Mr. Wright, look at the evidence. See the murder weapon? The tip is broken too. If I recall, the tip of the knife was found broken off in the victim's body. It was the conclusive piece of evidence that proved Joe Dark was the murderer. I'm afraid it's not so simple, Emma. And where, pray tell, could you possibly see a problem? It's obvious, really. The victim suffered a single stab wound to the back. If the victim was only stabbed once, then the murder weapon should not yet be broken. What's the meaning of this? Perhaps the knife was broken beforehand. Sorry, but I'm afraid that's not possible. The tip of the knife was found inside the victim's body. If it was broken beforehand, it couldn't have possibly ended up there. That's right, but what does this mean? The tip of the knife was undeniably discovered within the victim's body. The only possible explanation is the witness's memory is mistaken. Oh, so now we're going to discount her testimony. Now we're going to discount her, her testimony because it doesn't suit your narrative anymore. That's why I asked her so many times if she was sure she remembered correctly. I believe you were annoyed at the time, but she was sure she remembered correctly. But there's no other way to explain this inconsistency. Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. There is another explanation. Have you forgotten already about a little something called falsified evidence? You're treading on thin ice, right? All I'm saying is that this broken knife tip might be the piece of evidence that was forged. You can't deny the possibility. No. Ugh. Order, order, order. Are you saying the investigation really was corrupted? Your Honor, please allow me to once again go over the events that took I place. I will have order. Thank you, lovely. Please allow me to once again go over the events that took place on the day of the murder. The police department and the prosecutor's office were holding a ceremony that day. After receiving the King of Prosecutors Award at the ceremony, Neil Marshall questioned Joe Dark along with Damon Gant. During his questioning, Joe Dark fled the room, which I'm still trying to figure out how that happened. Magic. Prosecutor Marshall chased after him and was killed by Dark. It is my belief that somewhere in this story, there is a lie. Hmm. I... I'm not lying. The man really was holding up a broken knife. If that's true, then there's no other way around it. This could not have been the actual murder weapon. There must have been another broken knife. What are the chances of there being two broken knives? Another broken knife besides Joe Dark's. Could there have been a could there have been one? Oh yeah, there's absolutely another one. I even know where it is. If the witness is this adamant about the accuracy of what she saw, it can't just be explained away by a simple observational error. Mr. Wright. In that instant, Emma really did see a broken knife. I assume then that you have some information about this other broken knife. If so, please feel free to enlighten us. The murder weapon was already broken prior to the murder. There was, there's only one way. Take a look at this. 
here's the real murder weapon. The answer lies in the past. Two years in the past. Right here inside this picture. This is a picture of the awards ceremony. Ah! What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? It's the, the broken murder weapon. Notice the award Prosecutor Marshall is holding. That's, that's a broken knife. As we earlier concluded, the knife in the drawing was not Joe Dark's knife. That being the case, the knife the witness saw was in all likelihood from this award. Order, order, order. Neil Marshall was awarded the King of Prosecutors Award that day. As an award, he was given this broken shield and knife. When he chased after Joe Dart, he pulled out this knife. Being a prosecutor, he did not carry a pistol. Ah, hey! But that, that can't be. Oh, and why not, Mr. Edgeworth? Because if the King of Prosecutors award knife was the murder weapon, then the murderer and the victim would be reversed. What do you mean? I mean... This man raising a knife would have been Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Oh. Oh! But the prosecutor was the one that actually died. That's true. What's going on here? It seems Mr. Wright has been a bit too eager to jump to conclusions. No. Wait. I... I remember now. I remember everything. Witness? Mr. Edgeworth. What is it? Could you show me your evidence list again, please? His list? The one with that picture scribbled on the back? I knew it. This picture. I'm the one who drew this. What? You drew that? That's right. The list wasn't torn in half at the time I drew this picture. God, why are you playing the song again? All, the, all this time, I've been trying so hard to forget. I must have locked this part away deep inside of me. Perhaps it would be best if we added this to the witness's testimony. Would you please tell us what you've recalled, Miss Guy? Yes, Your Honor. First the knife mix-up, and now the blue badger? This should be interesting. When I saw that man raise his knife, I panicked and rushed toward both of them. I think I, I think I knocked away the man with the knife. Just then, there was another flash of lightning, and that's when I saw the blue badger. He wasn't in the room, but I'm sure I saw his shadow. What? This is certainly most unusual. Try impossible. The chief of detectives hadn't even designed him until this year. That would mean he didn't even exist two years ago. Yes, well, the defense may now begin its cross-examination. Hold it! Stop. Please, don't pursue this any further. Lana? What is the meaning of this? Please remain seated in the defendant's chair. But you can't do this. I've already confessed to the crime. Why can't you just leave it at that? Chief Prosecutor Skye. We've already come this far. It's too late to turn back. Not to mention, you're too damn desperate to be declared guilty. Silence. The defense will now begin its cross-examination. 
Bailiff, please detain the defendant. Well, it seems we're finally getting to the core of the matter. His shadow. So you mean you didn't actually see his face with its winning smile and all? That's right, but I still remember it. He had three creepy horns. This is pointless. That thing couldn't have possibly existed two years ago. The witness must be mistaken. Objection. That may well be. But what's important is that is what caused her to think she saw what she did. Oh, and I suppose you have an explanation. If so, then by all means, please tell us what this shadow really was. What was it Emma saw when that lightning flashed? Who is this blue badger really? The blue badger hadn't even been dreamt up when Emma drew this picture. Yet she's certain she saw its shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the defense's belief that on that fateful day two years ago, there indeed was something that looked similar to the blue badger. Something that is now sitting in this very room. It is? Mr. Wright? In this room. Very well, Mr. Wright. What is it that the witness saw in that instant? Please show us the mysterious blue badger look like. Um... The mysterious blue badger was in fact this. But that's... Uh, what exactly is that? I believe it's some sort of jar. But Mr. Wright, that doesn't look anything like the blue badger. Indeed it doesn't. As it stands now, it's just a plain jar. However, what if we were to change our viewpoint? Our viewpoint. I've got to show them the correct angle to look at this from. Dungeon, you shall assist. Oh, magically. Magically, I get it this time. Well, is this a miracle or what? No one can possibly deny that this jar... Ah! No one can possibly deny this jar's resemblance to the blue badger, y'all. Yeah. No, Nya. It can't be, Nya! Order. Order, Nya! The defense has proven its claim, Nya. The mysterious blue badger witnessed on the day of the crime was actually this... N Although we all enjoyed Mr. Wright's dramatic performance, Nya, one question remains. Nya. What's your point, Nya? What do you mean, yeah? So that badger thing was actually just a jar. Yeah. That doesn't change anything, yeah! I'm afraid that's where you're wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. Yeah. You see, yeah. This changes everything, yeah. Indeed. Very well then, Nya. Yeah. Please tell us. What's different now that we know the witness saw this jar, Nya? Yeah. Allow me to take these in turn, Nya. Yeah. Oh, did that work? Nya? Yeah. Did that did that work, Nya? At the moment of the murder, the witness saw this jar, Nya. Yeah. At a very specific angle, I might add, Mr. Wright. Yeah. Yes, well, knowing this, where could she have seen this jar? Where? The location of the jar is shown in a picture taken on the day of the crime. It's on a shelf in the office of Damon Gant. But the body was found lying near Lana Sky's desk. The witness testified so herself. 
Yes, and it is these two facts that reveal what actually transpired. You see, the struggle between Dark and Marshall did not take place in Lana Skye's office. It happened on the other side of the room, in Chief Gant's office. It's one room, guys! Come on! Are you implying the murderer moved the victim's body? From Damon Gant's office to Lana Skye's office? Yes, I am exactly saying that. Why would he do that? There's no reason! Exactly. If there wasn't a reason, he wouldn't have gone through the trouble. The only logical conclusion is, is that there was a reason. Do you know what that reason was, Mr. Wright? No. I finally figured it out. Have I? So this is why Lana tried to... It's too late to quit now, though. Please recall the witness's testimony. She said she knocked away the man who was holding up the knife. In the next instant, the jar was hit and flew through the air. Now tell me, what could have sent the jar flying? That would have have to have been the impact the man made when he was knocked into the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, if I may draw your attention to this picture once more. If the man was knocked in the direction of the shelf the jar was sitting on, what would he have hit? Ah! The suit of armor holding a very sharp and dangerous looking... That's not a sword, that's a spear. That is too short to be a sword. Yes. And since the man who was knocked into the armor was carrying a broken knife, he would have had to have been Neil Marshall wielding the King of Prosecutors trophy. No, Mr. Wright, you can't be thinking. Yes, there is another possibility of what actually transpired in that room. Another possibility? Of course, the perpetrator would have had no idea, but nevertheless. I, I don't know if I can go through with this. Mr. Wright, what's the matter? If events took place as the defense theorizes, then the outcome is obvious. In that moment, assuming the man Emma Sky knocked away was actually Prosecutor Neil Marshall. You mean and Mr. Marshall died because of me? It was an accident. It was absolutely an accident. No! And she's out. Yeah, I'm right. Excellent. 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 I never imagined her testimony would lead to this. So it was the witness who took the victim's life and then proved so with her own testimony. This is unprecedented. What? What are you saying? I'm sorry, Miss Skye, but given the circumstances, Joe Dark murdered Prosecutor Marshall. How can you think it was Emma? How dare you try to pin the crime on her? Imagine that coming from you. If you recall, it was you who admitted to forging evidence two years ago. The reason you moved Prosecutor Marshall's body was to keep anyone else from finding out about what Emma did 
wasn't it? I assure you, Mr. Edgeworth, I have no idea what you're talking about. If you hope to have anyone believe your insane allegations, I'm afraid you're going to have to have proof. Tell me, do you have any conclusive evidence that proves my sister killed Neil Marshall? E evidence? Yes, yes, Phoenix, that is a thing, indeed, that I need occasionally to, you know, make sure that our insane crackpot theories actually hold water. I'm willing to bet you don't. Yes, it certainly would be difficult to prove this with evidence. If we don't have evidence, then we'll have to rely on testimony. I'm afraid that won't work in this case. Both parties involved in the incident are dead. We certainly can't get dead people to testify. Yeah, Maya's not here. This has all been a wild goose chase from the beginning. Um, touche, Miss Sky. Of course, that only leaves us with one possibility. You mean there's still another possibility? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? I mean, the possibility that the victim has left us a message. For better or for worse, Mr. Marshall did not die instantly. He may have left behind the name of the person who took his life. In one manner or another. That's, that's impossible. Is it though? What is he cooking? Who, Edgeworth? God only knows. He'll tell me when he damn well feels like it. Well, Mr. Wright, this is the only possibility left to you. A message from the deceased. Does such a message exist? I've got to think back to the court record. The real murderer's name that the victim may have left behind is in the evidence. This message from the deceased is already in our possession. Mr. Wright, will you stop at nothing to prove my sister a murderer? Do not be mistaken, Miss Guy. Our purpose is not to accuse Emma of any crime. There is only one thing we seek. The truth. No matter how painful it may be. Now then, Mr. Wright. Please show us the piece of evidence that conveys a message from the deceased. Locked. This is the message left by the deceased. Yeah, because there was a big piece with all the blood traces on it that Gant was also hiding in his safe. This is that blue badger from before, correct? Oh, is he going to just speak the killer's name? If that thing could, I'm sure it would. Looks like everyone's forgotten this is just a jar. A message was left here, on the surface of this jar. What do you mean? If you look closely, you can see a faint trail of blood on this jar. It looks like someone wiped the blood away. Yes, but notice, for some reason, the blood on some of the fragments was not wiped away. Yes, there is a line here drawn in blood. So what you are saying is these dots were once lines. Prosecutor Marshall did not die instantly. He used the few precious moments left to him to leave behind a message. One that someone apparently wiped away, but blood must have seeped into the jar where the lines changed direction. Precisely so. All we need to do is connect these points, and the victim's message will become apparent. N no Mr. Wright, what kind of message did the victim leave for us? Your Honor, I believe these bloodstains will reveal to us the answer. I've got to connect these dots to make letters. There's only one thing the victim could have written, given the circumstances. His murderer's name. He. It's a defense attorney's duty 
to prove their client's innocence. That's why all I've been thinking about is saving Lana. After all my efforts, I never thought it would turn out like this. Emma. So this is the final message Prosecutor Marshall left behind. Of all people, she may not have meant it, but in the end, the one who took the victim's life was Emma Skye. Seaworthy can't say I didn't warn you. Chief Gant. Do you understand the implications of what you've done? What? What are you talking about? Two years ago, Joe Dark was sentenced to death. He was convicted because of his final murder. I believe you were the prosecutor in that case. Were you not? Why is he ugly? Because he's the bad guy. Uh, yes, Worthy. Because of you, an innocent man has been sentenced to death. Not only that, but you used forged evidence to, con to ensure his conviction, which you gave him. <laughs> yeah, Edgeworth is having a heart attack now. But Joe Dark really was a serial murderer. That's undeniable. I'm afraid that's not important. Didn't you know we aren't defenders of justice? What? We're merely keepers of the law. Sentencing a man to death is no light matter. Even if there wasn't any cover-up or evidence of forgery, ultimately the responsibility falls on the prosecutor in charge. Uh, despite what anyone may say, this fact cannot be denied. What's going on at the prosecutor's office? They might have sent an innocent man to his death. How can he just stand there like it wasn't his fault? Order, order, order! Someone slap the button. I will have order!